I would like to start by thanking all of you for being here and taking the time to view my presentation. I would like to thank Wynn for welcoming me to Clayson Studio and being incredibly insightful, helpful, and taking the time to help me through several roadblocks I hit during my residency. I would also like to thank my ceramics professor, Marianne McGrath, for bringing this opportunity forward, which helped me grow as a person and as an artist, as well as furthering my knowledge and confidence with clay. During my residency, I got to appreciate just how big of a factor weather can be while working with clay. Due to the dry heat in Ojai, I, will, I learned to work quickly and efficiently. In addition, I also had the opportunity to revisit plaster mold making, and now I feel confident in handling plaster and making molds, which is something I struggled with prior to the residency. Initially, my goal for the residency was to make a large-scale sculpture. However, as I progressed and began working, I was drawn more to exploring mold making, and hence the images of this presentation. I spoke to Wynn and shifted my idea and goal from a large-scale piece to an installation composed of several components. Shortly after revisiting my initial goal, I began making molds and casting different pieces of bandoze. At first, I had a hard time because casting bread can be challenging, especially when I may have not paid full attention to the material assigned during my class while making plaster molds. Wen was instrumental in changing the way I casted bread as he introduced me to polycrylic. Polycrylic is not, not only stabilizes and hardens the bread, but it also keeps its integrity, which makes for a cleaner mold without the struggle of having to clean off crumbs from the plaster. Moving forward, I will be implementing the use of polyacrylic into my practice as casting food items for press molds is something that I found incredibly fun to do. During my residency, I was able to accomplish several goals I had in mind. First, I was able to meet my personal goal of casting 100 pieces of fondue, casting a total of 115. All pieces were cast from seven different molds. These molds were casted from bread I bought at the panaderia that my family visits most here in Oxnard. Second, I was able to competently make molds that were stable, reusable, and retain a great amount of detail that transferred to the clay seamlessly without having to pick crumbs off the plaster as I had done previously. With the help of wind, I was able to produce even and consistent slabs with the use of a slab roller and able to properly use the extruder, which are processes that significantly sped up my work during the residency. In addition, I was able to make the little tray that resembles a Russian nesting doll, which is something I had in mind for some time now, but I didn't have the chance to make until now. And I am incredibly happy with the way the idea came to life. Lastly, I was able to build the installation I had envisioned with the components I wanted, which are the combination of my pan dulce bread, the traditional kitchen where my family uses at home, all in one setting that resembles what I saw growing up. My installation is based off a puesto setting, or a street vendor setting. Growing up in Mexico, my family and I would visit puestos early in the morning for breakfast, which was so café de olla, hot chocolate, champurrado, and natole to drink and sell things like tamales, chilaquiles, and especially pan dulce to eat. I can vividly recall the taste, looks, and smells of the puestos. The puestos also have a vivid memories of visiting my grandma's family in the state of Oaxaca. Often when we would go and visit, we would stop by early in the mornings in puestos and have breakfast, and it would be an extended family that would be with us. So it's very cherished memories that I have of these puestos. I wanted to combine several traditional components of the puestos with my own work in order to elevate them and their importance not only in my life, but my culture. The components I chose to combine with my installations, with my installation were the clay pot, where the drinks are kept warm, and it's also the same one we use at home. The mugs in the picture are also common and traditional and are the ones 
that we use in our home as well. The wooden utensil on top of the clay pot is called a molinillo, which is a whisk used to whip up the foam and mix the hot chocolate. The bright colored plastic plates are commonly used at puestos since they're easy to clean and reusable, so the vendors don't have to keep buying disposable plates. As the centerpiece is a tascal, which is generally where the bread is sold and kept. The tascales found at puestos are incredibly large. They're something uh, maybe three to four feet in diameter. So I couldn't find something like that. And when you find them here, they're incredibly expensive. So I use the one that we use for keeping tortillas warm at home. Even the plastic stools are common in a puesto. I strive for making the installation as authentic and inviting as possible. I wanted to give my audience a welcoming atmosphere as well as giving them a sense of even being able to taste and being hungry at looking at the bread. The seven breads are casted were conchas, the regular sized conchas, conchitas, which are the small sized conchas, more colorful, orejas, which are large bread that resemble palm ears, biscuits, which are sweet biscuits, elotes, which are the baguette shaped bread, porquitos, which are the brown piggies that are, uh, they have the shimmer on top, and the besos, which are the two-part oblong uh, reddish ball, some of them are white, those are the, the besos. These are a small amount of the larger selection found at panaderias, but these are the ones that my dad buys the most, and hence why I chose these seven as my sp specific focus. This is a homage to my dad and his hard work and bringing out the bringing home the daily bread literally and figuratively. With this series, I wanted to explore the similarities bread making and ceramics have as they both make use of fire to achieve their end result. They are both kneaded or wedged and both are a work of art that comes from hard physical work. Moving forward with my practice, I will revisit my large scale peas idea. It's something that is still in development and will eventually find the right time and place for and be able to cons fully conceptualize at a point. Now that I have more speed and confidence in handling clay, I feel I can tackle much more than I previously estimated. I would also like to refine my mold making skills and make both press and slip cast molds of bread with ease. In addition, I would like to expand on the series to the point where I can make a full panaderia worth of work and possibly make an installation that resembles a working panaderia, including the visuals, smells, and the setting. Eventually, I would also like to throw pots and mugs in the traditional manner and include those into my installations. I will it would be a nice way to elevate the common everyday items like clay pots and mugs that I find in my household, but I would feel it would be a lot more rewarding for me to throw them rather than using the ones that we have at home. This concludes my presentation. Once again, I would like to thank you all for being here and I hope you enjoyed my work. Thank you.